Okay, everybody, I'm gonna go over materials for sculpting a portrait bust. Um, I'm teaching online now, so a lot of you will have to order your own materials, and um, I won't have a chance to really show you how to set those up. So I decided to make a video, and this is just for portrait busts, not the whole figure. So I'll do a different video later on figurative sculptures. Um, so you have two options with making a portrait bust, meaning the head and shoulders body. Um, you can use two kinds of clay. You can use terracotta. Terracotta is like potter's clay. Or you can use oil-based clay. This is Roma brand, Roma Plastilina brand from Sculpture House. And there are other brands of both. Now, the benefit of terracotta, potter's clay, is the price and that you can fire this. You have the opportunity to, in the end, put this in the kiln and fire it. The price is low, but the downside is it dries out. It's water-based, so it's very messy when it dries. The crumbs get on the floor and then you step on the crumbs and then it turns into dust. So you have to be a little bit careful when you use this clay. You don't want to use it in your living room um, on a carpet, okay? This can be a little messy. So terracotta is affordable. It might be only 60 cents a pound and it comes in 25 pound bags. I would say get 50 pounds if you're gonna do a, a portrait because you might need a little extra for the shoulders depending on how, how much of the body you're showing. You could just show down to the bottom of the neck and maybe get away with 25 pounds. Um, so as you work with terracotta, you're gonna need a spray bottle. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna wanna spritz it when you take a break, and then you're gonna wanna cover it with plastic at the end of the day to keep it uh, moist. So that uh, requires a little bit of maintenance, but it's very joyful to work with. It's very soft. You can see through the plastic, I can move this quite easily with my hands. Now, as it dries, it's not so fun to work with. It gets very leathery and hard. So some people like that. Uh, towards the end, you can start scraping it and uh, possibly even sanding it. I don't know, but uh, I'll show you a dried one. Here is a little plain set I did in terracotta. You can see it's dried now. The color is lighter. And in the bottom, there's a hole where I had one of these armatures inside of him to, to keep him from falling over. So um, you will need an armature, and these are called armatures. So I'll go over these armatures. Um, I'm, these are all homemade. So another savings you can, you can have when you do terracotta is you can make your own armature. And this is the cheapest one I've done. This is just some scrap plywood I had laying around, which I uh, tripled up in this case to an inch and a half thickness. And what I did is I, if you draw two diagonals from corner to corner, you can find the center and then drill a hole. I think I drilled a one inch hole that didn't go all the way through, just, just halfway. And then I put this PVC pipe in the hole. The hole was a little wider than the pipe, and then I epoxied it with five minute epoxy. So it's pretty rigid, but you can't be too forceful with this. But the benefit of it is the low cost. So you can get a big stick of this PVC for, I can't even remember, it was so cheap, I don't even remember how much it was. Um, and you could make four or five of these armatures. And um, this is a foot tall, 12 inches on this. Okay, now this is the same concept, except this, this pipe is galvanized steel, plumbing, plumbing pipe. So when you go to the hardware store, go to the plumbing section, 
and look for galvanized steel. It's gonna be the, the silvery colored steel. And galvanized um, is not supposed to rust. Now, you're gonna pay a little more for this galvanized steel than this plastic PVC. What also adds to the cost is this steel flange at the bottom. This is called a flange. Um, but the benefit is this isn't going to move at all. I mean, you can really be aggressive, as I like to be when I sculpt. Um, I'm very physical with it, so I prefer this. With this one, you have to take a little more care, um, you know, setting up your clay gingerly, letting it kind of dry, and then building more slowly on top of it. So you might want to start this one a day or two before you really start the sculpture. Um, now, there are terracotta artists out there that are very skilled with firing and um, they understand the clay. I don't, so people might be cringing as I talk about terracotta. Um, most of my finished products are in plaster or bronze that I create through a rubber mold process. So, so here um, you can look up Joanna Mosden's videos on YouTube. What she does is put a, um, you know, a roll of newspaper around the pipe and you want it to go past the top of the pipe and you can even build like a, a uh, sphere of paper and tape at the top and then um, build your clay around that very carefully. And I'll put a link to her video. Um, and what that, what that does is it, it, it saves you some clay on the inside, right? If your head's here. And it also makes it very easy to just, when the thing is dry, cut around the bottom and lift that entire thing off the pipe. So remember with this head, there's a hole in the bottom. And what I did is I just cut, you know, I cut around the base with a wire or a um, putty knife. And then I just, help, I had someone hold down or clamp it down and then lift straight up and then he's, He's totally metal free because you can't put any metal in the in the kiln. Okay. Now you can th if this paper is stuck inside him, that's okay. That that'll burn out in the kiln. So that's what that paper's for. Now you can do it without the paper, and I've found that it still slides off. Um, it's just you'll use more clay. Hope that makes sense. Now, here's one more homemade armature. The only difference here is the base. And you have to think when, when you finally get your, your big sculpture on here, it becomes very, very heavy. So it's nice to have these, um, these cutouts and these two feet, these are two by fours on the bottom so that it's easy to pick that up. So you wanna think about that, what kind of base you have because Sculpture, by its nature, is, is very physical and heavy. Now, the difference here, if you have feet, you can use a thinner piece of plywood. This is three quarter inch, just one piece. And then instead of using wood screws on the flange, I used four little bolts. And, oh, some clay fell out. <laughs> and um, some little hex, hex nuts. Okay, so these are, this flange is through bolted into the, into the uh, plywood. Some people prefer that because then they have the option of, of unscrewing these if they need to for, during the mold making process. Just gives you more flexibility. Okay, but I, I do like having something here. So even with this one, you could just glue two strips of, of you know, one by one wood or something, just so you have a little space to pick it up. All right, those are good armatures for terracotta. Um, now, the other clay I mentioned is the uh, oil-based clay, also called plastilina or plasti plasticine, plastiline. I've seen a lot of different names for this stuff. Um, so this is the Roma brand, number one. It's the softest Roma brand. 
and it's available through sculpturehouse.com. And I'll put links to this in my email and, and below. Now, um, the thing about Roma is when it's cold, it's very hard. But as you warm it up in your hands, it gets very soft. So you wanna make sure if it's winter time, don't leave this out in your car at night. Bring it in, keep it by the wood stove. Uh, you might have to warm it up in your oven somehow uh, before you start working with it. Now in the summertime, you can put it out in the sun or in your car uh, and it'll, it'll get very soft. So like I said, this stuff's expensive but the benefit is it never dries, ever. Never dries. So the difference in price is immense. Um, this can be about $8 a pound. This is a two pound block. So this little block is $15, $16, depending on, you know, you might get it on sale for $14, I don't know. So that's, that's uh, the price you pay for it. Now there is a, um, a budget brand, which is on sale right now. This is Plaxton. I think it's Italian. And this is sold at Sculpture House as well. And right now I think this is only about 350 a pound. This is a kil kilogram block, uh, which is close in size to a two pound block. I think it's like six and a half dollars for that kilo, kilogram. Now, the color is very similar, but I'll say this, the, the budget brand Plaxton has a slight little grit inside it. It has a little bit of a kind of a sandy, it's smooth, but it has some kind of, a, some kind of grog in it. Um, whereas the Roma is, is a little creamier and smoother. Now the Plaxton, interestingly enough, is sulfur free and the Roma is not. Roma contains sulfur. So they both have a different smell. Some people hate the smell of this. I mean, my studio and car smells like this and uh, people that don't know me yet go, well, you know, what is that smell? It kind of smells like matches. So. Some people hate it, some people don't mind it. But, you know, when you get into a portrait bust, you're gonna need, like I said, 25 pounds, 30 pounds, 40 pounds of this stuff, so that so it's really cha-ching, cha-ching, starts adding up. Now, you know, as a dedicated artist, I do spend on my materials. And I have a lot of this stuff in different colors, different brands. Um, and I'm kind of used to spending on it. But if it's your first time, maybe you just want to start with the terracotta. So this stuff you can get from any local clay supply. If you have a pottery supply company um, in your local area, try to go pick it up. Because when you start paying for shipping on this, it's going to increase the price. It's always better if you can drive and pick it up. Okay, now um, for the Roma, for the plastiline oil-based clay, I would recommend using an armature like this. This is the professional grade armature from um, the Complete Sculptor in New York City. Complete, uh, C-O-M-P-L-E-A-T, Complete Sculptor. And this is a 24-inch, um, tall head. The nice thing about this, it has the galvanized pipe and the flange, but then the top part is um, aluminum wire and it's movable. So that the beauty of sculpture, you know, one thing that makes sculpture a little bit easier than painting is the fact that you can actually move the head if it's in the wrong position, you can change it. So I like that. I believe they make another one where there's actually um, a shoulder support here, and that can be nice too. You could drill through this if, if you're skilled, you have a drill press, you could drill through here and put a bar in or weld something onto this. And that's nice if you're gonna include the shoulders to have some support here. Okay, so 
So this is good for, um, you could use it for either type of clay, but especially when you're using um, expensive plastiline oil-based clay, you don't want to have to create a huge base to support your sculpture. It, it's nice if you can have just a small base because it's you don't want to spend a lot of money on just building a base so that your sculpture doesn't fall over um, later. And then if you wanted to keep this, you can just have it on your shelf exposed. It's not going to dry. I've had some for several years sitting on my shelf um, in plastiline and that's fine for display just um, at home. But if you wanted to make it permanent, um, you would want to make a mold around it and then reproduce it into plaster, resin, or bronze. Okay, so I believe this is the 24 inch professional grade. Um, I gotta tighten this. Uh, head armature from Complete Sculptor, and I'll, I'll give you the link. Now, as far as tools go for both, whether you're using um, terracotta or oil-based clay, the tools are the same. Um, I recommend, I wrote these down because I always forget the numbers. From Sculpture House, sculpturehouse.com, they have a section called wire end tools. Okay, these are called wire end tools because the end scraping mechanism is, is wire. It's a very soft edged wire with a little bit of teeth on it. And for the portraits and figures, I recommend these three sizes to start with. The first one is um, the number 211 tool, and it's the heavy duty double wire end tool. They have two different kinds. One has a, um, there's another one of these that has a squared off end, but this is the, the 211, which has the rounded end. I like the rounded end personally, but the um, angled end is the same on both. So one end's angled with the teeth, and another end is rounded with the teeth. That's the 211. Now, the same shape, but a little bit smaller, is the 212. And this is what I call the medium size tool. And I think it is called the medium tool on their website. So this is the same tool, just a little bit smaller, medium sized. And that's, that's the number 212, 212. And then there's a little tiny fine one, same shape. And this is the 217. This is really good when you get into like, you know, behind the nose or little eye socket stuff, little things in the hair ear. You know, this one fits in the ear nicely. I would recommend this one for portraits and figure because when you get to those little details, you're going to need something finer. And this is the 217 wire tool. So these are wire tools, also called rake, rake tools because you're raking the surface with this wire. Now, don't confuse these with ribbon tools. Ribbon tools are for cutting and they have a um, they have a wider blade at the top. So those are better for pottery. And then one, one um, other type of tool I recommend are hardwood modeling tools. You can even make tools like these yourself. These are good for like, you know, nostrils and eyeballs and getting inside the ear details. So sculpturehouse.com they make a set of four hardwood detailing tools. And the SKU number is 264WEB, okay? And I like these because you can sand them. You know, if this is a little too thick, you can sand it down and make this a little thinner. So that's the nice thing about wooden tools. They also have a very organic, um, feel to them when you're hitting the clay. They, they give a little bit, but they're still rigid. I prefer these over plastic tools. Plastic is just a little too flexible. And then metal, I don't know. I mean, unless you're doing, you're messing with wax or plaster, a harder material. I don't think there's any reason to use metal with clay, but that's my personal, um, you know, just opinion. Okay, hope this was helpful and 
I will put links down below. All right, take care.